up guys welcome back to my channel and today I have another video for you guys so today I'm going to a afternoon tea with my friends so I'm gonna show you guys the get ready portion fresh face of no makeup I just put on my face cream and sunscreen and that's about it and then I'm also gonna show you guys several different ways to hip thrust so yeah, I'm really excited. I went to one of these afternoon teas for my sister's bachelorette. It was so fun and the food was so good. So I'm going with my friends this time and I haven't eaten breakfast yet because the food there is so, so filling. So I do want to go with an empty stomach and kind of indulge for a bit. Also, I haven't eaten out this whole week. I've just been eating my home cooked meals because that's what I like best. I'm not a type of person that can eat out every single day. I know some people who buy food for every single meal of the day or like two meals of the day. And I'm like, I cannot do that. I just feel so much better when I'm eating home cooked meals. So I'll, do, I'll have like a cheat meal once a week where I go out to eat and treat myself a bit for eating healthy for the entire week. And yeah. Also, if you don't already, definitely follow me on Instagram. It's just at a glulu. And whenever I'm not on my YouTube channel, you can find me on my Instagram, posting stories, photos, or videos. So if you do want to keep in touch with me when I'm not on my YouTube channel, then definitely follow me on over at my Instagram. And if you aren't subscribed already, definitely hit that subscribe button. And if you already are subscribed, click that notification bell. And that way you can be notified every time I upload new videos like this one. I'm liking this lighting setup. I'm looking really tan. Well, it looks like it in the viewfinder. I don't know how it's actually going to look when I upload it into my computer, but hopefully the same. And also I am doing a giveaway in this video. So I am giving away two women's best protein powders. And I'm also going to be giving away a woman's best BCA amino. So obviously I've used these ones, but I'm just showing it to you guys to show you. The ones I'm giving away are going to be completely sealed, completely full and not used. So if you do want to win, ah, if you do want to win two proteins and a BCA from women's best, all you have to do is follow me on over at my Instagram and there will be a entry website linked down in the description box. And all you have to do is click on the link, enter in your IG handle, your email, and then I'm going to pick someone from that, you know, website database. So I'm going to have all the rules in the description box. Basically, follow me on over at my Instagram. I will check to see if the winner is following me. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel. Give this video a like and go on over down in the description box and enter in that website link. So yeah, that's all for my little intro there. Let's just start to, you know, get ready. So first off, I'm going to prime my face and I recently got this CoverGirl True Blend Base Business. And this is like the charcoal mattifying one. And I've been really liking this. It really mattifies my skin and it doesn't like cling onto dry patches or anything because my skin has been so dry guys, like, hella dry. And the primer that I was using before, which is the poor, poor professional primer or whatever, it was starting to like leave flakes on my skin. So mm, that ain't good. So this one is great because it mattifies, doesn't leave dry patches. So now I'm gonna apply my foundation on top. So I've been really liking the L'Oreal Paris Infallible Pro Glow. So I have two colors because I'm going to mix them together to get my correct color. This foundation is really good. One of my best friends recommended it and it looks so natural on the skin, but it also has really great coverage and it doesn't feel heavy at all. Like it doesn't even feel like I'm wearing foundation. That's the problem I have with a lot of like foundations and that's one of the reasons why I don't like wearing foundation. It is so uh, moisturizing, it just makes your face look like skin. Is it focusing? I can't even tell if it's focused, but Look at how radiant and like glowy that is. Hence, Pro Glow, mm-hmm. And then compared to the other side, it just looks so goddamn natural. Yeah, girl. My friend Sarah is so good at makeup. I'm like, can you please teach me your ways? 
Okay, so I'm done with my Pro Glow foundation. Mm. I'm living for that glow, girls. I'm using my Maybelline Fit Me powder. So I really like this powder. I find it really mattifies, doesn't cling on to dry patches. Those are like my main things. Like I want it to mattify, but not to cling on to dry patches. I see beauty YouTubers do this all the time where they pour a little bit of that onto here. So I'm just, oh, you know what? I forgot to put on concealer. Oh my God. Oh, this is not good. Okay, anyways, I'm gonna be using the Makeup Forever Concealer. I love this one. So, like, budge proof. Is that the word? Yeah, budge proof. Um, stays all day. I don't wear a lot of work. I don't wear a lot of makeup to work. The only makeup I'll wear is a little bit of concealer every day, and I can't believe I forgot that. So that's something I wear every day. I'm using this Anastasia Beverly's Dip Brow Thingy in Ebony. Because this is talked about so much on YouTube, I think. And it has so many reviews on Sephora. And I can understand why it makes the brows look like they all fleek. Just using this like angled brush. I got this off Amazon. What should I do with my eyes? I'm honestly not very good with like eyeshadow. So I don't even know if I want to wear eyeshadow. But you know, we're going to attempt this. If it looks really bad, that's okay. So I'm using this Tartalit, Tartalit palette in bloom. Please ignore the destroyed front. So these are the shadows. I got this white shade. I'm gonna apply this all over my lid. Okay, let's do this color. This jet setter color. I'm gonna put a like right here, I hope this does not look bad because then I would have to take this off and that would just be a nightmare. I'm gonna use this white brush. I'm gonna go in with this color here called Rocket. I'm gonna first apply pencil eyeliner. So this one is from Annabelle. I'm gonna tight line, is that the right word? Tight line. My upper lash line. Okay, I'm gonna go in with this Kat Von D eyeliner and I'm going to line my eyes. Next, I'm doing mascara. So, done my mascara. I'm just gonna put on a little bit of blush. So I'm gonna be using the NARS Orgasm Blush. And it just looks like that, this pink one. And I love how it gives like a natural look. Oh, I forgot to put on lipstick. I'm gonna use this L'Oreal Paris Daring Blush Color. And that is it. That is the finished makeup look. Hopefully it doesn't look too horrible on camera. And I'm gonna head out and meet my friends at the afternoon tea. So, yeah. So this is what it looks like in the daylight. Wow, it actually doesn't look too bad. I mean, I'm looking at it in a small viewfinder, but you know, don't look too crazy or nothing. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna head to afternoon tea. So we're still waiting on our friend who 
was looking for parking and right now I'm trying to decide what tea I want to get. So last time I got so last time I got the creamy Earl Grey and it was so good, but I'm kind of leaning towards the Grand Bazaar Spice because I do like chai tea. So I'm kind of leaning towards the Grand Bazaar Spice, so I might end up getting Yeah, I'm so excited. questionable things. I mean the macaroon is pretty normal but this looks like a, a peach butt. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and then the scones, I've tried these before, they're so good and they give you Devonshire cream and jam to put on top so yeah I'm having my little macaroon right now. with the afternoon tea super fun it was pricey but it was really nice to experience that so right now I'm about to head to the gym I wanted to share with you guys 20 different ways that you can hip thrust so I always perform hip thrusts in all of my glute workouts because for me it's the most effective for growing my glutes some people maybe squats are more effective for them but for me personally it's hip thrusts. So I do like to perform different kinds of hip thrusts, whether that be using different kind of equipment or changing up the stance. And I find performing different exercises is one of the key ways to actually grow your glutes and overcome like muscle building plateaus. So I wanted to share with you guys these 20 different ways to hip thrust. If you have hit a plateau or you're trying to think of new exercises to incorporate in your workouts. So these are 20 different ways that you can hip thrust. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this video. I'll talk to you guys after. So the first type of hip thrust is the barbell explosive hip thrust. So for this specific hip thrust, you want to make sure to descend slowly and then once you're about to thrust upwards, you want to thrust up in an explosive movement and as fast as you can. Then at the top of the movement, you're going to hold that position for two to three seconds and you're really going to feel that glute activation, girls. And boys, of course. The second way to hip thrust is the OG hip thrust. So the original hip thrust where your feet are placed shoulder width apart and the angle between your calf and your thigh should be 90 degrees at the top of the movement. And the third way to hip thrust is the sumo hip thrust or the rotation hip thrust. So for this specific hip thrust, your feet should be placed slightly wider than shoulder width apart. Your feet should be angled outwards and then you want to thrust up just like in the previous hip thrust stance. So in this one, your feet are placed wider apart. The fourth way to hip thrust is the feet away hip thrust. So for this one, your feet are placed a foot farther out compared to the original hip thrust. And the angle between your calf and your thigh should be greater than 90 degrees. It should be like 110, 120. And the fifth way to hip thrust is actually the original hip thrust but using a specific hip thrust machine so my gym has one of these 
uh, but some gyms might not. But I do really like this hip thrust machine, but I do feel the glute activation and barbell hip thrusts more. And basically, you just want to place your feet shoulder width apart, slightly turned out, and thrust upwards. So now moving towards hip thrusts that you can perform at home or an apartment gym where the equipment might be limited. So the six way to hip thrust is dumbbell original hip thrust. So instead of using a barbell, you can use a dumbbell and your feet will be placed shoulder width apart and you just thrust upwards. The seventh way to hip thrust is frog hip thrust. So for this, you want to lean against a bench or you can use a couch. And the soles of your feet should be touching and basically you look like you're in a frog position and then you want to thrust upwards. And the eighth way to hip thrust is the frog hip thrust, but using a dumbbell. So you can perform this hip thrust using your body weight or you can use dumbbell to add a little bit more resistance and make it a little bit harder. The ninth way to hip thrust is body weight V stance hip thrust. So for this one, your feet are placed in a V position and the heels of your feet should be touching. And then you just thrust upwards and squeeze your glutes. The 10th way to hip thrust is the dumbbell V stance hip thrust. So exact same positioning as the last exercise, but you're adding in a dumbbell to increase that resistance and the level of difficulty with this exercise. The 11th way to hip thrust is body weight close stance hip thrust. So for this exercise, you're leaning against the bench again and your feet are placed right next to each other and you thrust upwards. <laughs> I feel like I've said thrust so many times. And the 12th way to hip thrust is the dumbbell close stance hip thrust. Feet are placed close together and then you add a dumbbell for that increased difficulty or resistance. The 13th way to hip thrust is the single leg hip thrust. So as the title would demonstrate, you're performing the hip thrust using one leg only and you're just using your body weight. So I like to kind of like swing my leg upwards and back down as I'm hip thrusting. I just find that's the most natural feeling. The 14th way to hip thrust is the B stance body weight hip thrust. And it's called the B stance hip thrust because your legs kind of create the letter B. One leg is closer to your body and the other one is extended outwards and is less bent. So the leg that is more bent that's creating the 90 degree between your calf and your thigh is primarily doing the hip thrusting work while the other one is placed forward more for support and balance. So you should feel that glute activation more in the glute where that leg is bent. <laughs> and the 15th way to hip thrust is the B stance hip thrust with a dumbbell. So you can add that dumbbell for that increased level of difficulty and it's the exact same stance where one leg is more bent, the other one is less bent and more forward to provide that additional support because it is kind of awkward to perform single leg hip thrusts, I find. Um, but this variation is really great because the other leg just provides that balance. And the 16th way to hip thrust is the OG body weight pause hip thrust. So for this variation of the hip thrust, your feet are placed in the original stance, which is shoulder width apart. And when you thrust upwards and you're at the top of the movement, you're going to pause for a good two to three seconds. So now moving on to a bridge hip thrust. The 17th way to hip thrust is the bridge hip thrust where you're lying flat on the ground with your feet shoulder width apart and you're thrusting your hips upwards into the air while your upper back remains on the ground. And the 18th way to hip thrust is hip thrusting in a bridge position but using a dumbbell. The 19th way to hip thrust is the dumbbell sumo bridge. So the positioning for this exercise is the same for the last two, except your feet are placed in a wider than shoulder width stance and a dumbbell on top of your pelvis. And the final way to hip thrust is the close stance dumbbell bridge. So for this exercise, your feet are placed right next to each other in a close stance and the dumbbell placed on top of your pelvis. I really hope you guys enjoyed that and that gave you some ideas 
on different ways to hip thrust. So if you did enjoy this video, definitely give it a thumbs up. Follow me on over at my Instagram if you don't already and subscribe. And I think that's it for this video. I did a similar video like this one, but with dumbbells, it was like 20 different ways or sorry, 20 booty exercises using only dumbbells. So I'll have that link down in the description box if you guys are interested or at the end of this video. So yeah, that was it. I hope you guys are having an amazing day and I will talk to you guys in my next video. Bye.